And Alan, I heard, and I was taught, and I believe, that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the deep sea, and that more people have been to the moon than have been to the deep sea. No, don't get me started. No, I know that. I've, I've read that hundreds of times. It's the opener of almost every newspaper article. You, you can't tell me that's wrong. It is wrong. This is a classic case of self-flagellation in deep sea science. It's one of the things that bugs me probably the most. I think this is probably a very good episode one rant. Get this over and done with now. Plus, it's also quite topical because there are things happening right now which, which knocks off some of these things that were already stupid and they were actually genuinely, totally and utterly stupid. So there's this phrase that we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the deep sea. And it's, 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 it is just ridiculous. It's one of these misleading statements that it's used in almost every deep sea related article or speech or media coverage or whatever it may be. But what other scientific discipline would insist on opening any dialogue whether written or verbal, with a statement about how little you know about your own discipline. It seems just ridiculous. It's like, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm a scientist. I know nothing about my subject. It seems really odd. So, you know, I've recently read this on something advertising World Oceans Days. I've seen it in various marine foundation statements, and it was a subject of a TEDx talk, and recently I saw it, it was the opening line of a acceptance speech for Public Engagement Award. You know, and it just won't go away. And even I was quoted as saying this about a year and a half ago from a journalist. And I wrote to them and said, I didn't say this because if there's anyone who wouldn't say this, it's me. And they said, and it was almost like, but that's what people say. <laughs> so we're just going to put it in. This is what people want to hear. They want to hear that you know nothing about your discipline and we know loads about the moon. Uh, and it actually went out on a press release and got, got some coverage on it. And I was mortified. So this subject is something that came to light. It's quite a funny story, actually. I was... Uh, asked to review the deep sea episode of Blue Planet. I'm not going to have a go at Blue Planet. I'd love to, but I'm not going to. Blue Planet, is, for me, is, is not them per se. It's it, just the latest vehicle which this kind of stuff has been punted around on. So apologies to Blue Planet. It's not you particularly. It's your entire discipline I'm having a go at. I was asked to review it for a journal, so I watched it. It was Guy Fox Night. This is a random fact for you. 2017. And, of course, it starts off, we know more about the surface of, wait a minute, it wasn't the moon. It wasn't the moon this time. Blue Planet 2 upgraded it. It was we know more about the surface of Mars than we know about the deep sea. So I texted Tom. I actually got a transcript of this text conversation. So I said to Tom, we know more about Mars. I've removed expletives in this, by the way. Tom wrote back gone, well, it's one up on the moon. Personally, he was sick of the moon. He feels he knew the moon like the back of his hands. So I wrote back saying, so we know more about a lifeless dry rock floating in a vacuum than a larger planet covered in water and atmosphere and millions of species. So Tom said this phrase must have an origin, so I should go and find it. So I made it a personal quest, a voyage of discovery, you might say, to find out where on earth this stupid phrase came from. And it gets even more ridiculous. So here's what I found. And I may be wrong, but this is what I found in my little search. This ridiculous statement is nonsense. So the earliest mention of this statement I could find came from somebody called George Deacon who published an article in the Journal of Navigation, and he was quoting a guy called Sir Edward Bullard, who died 40 years ago, is saying it. So this statement was published 67 years ago, right? This is where the origin of the statement that we're still using on a regular basis, 67 years ago. Have we learned anything since then? Well, we've done quite a lot since then. I think we've done a lot in the deep sea and the moon since then. Oh, are they neck and neck? Well, I don't know, maybe. So this statement was originated 15 years before the moon landings, and at a time where I guess we knew not that much about the surface of the moon either. So it's a bit bizarre. Now, it gets interesting when you think about this upgrade from the moon to Mars, and when did that appear? So my sleuthing, it happened around 2010. So does that mean then we know more about Mars now than we did about the moon in 1953? Or does that mean that we still know more about an icy, lifeless, spherical rock drifting in a vacuum in 1953 than the vast oceans of our planet that host millions of species over hundreds of habitat with an inconceivable number of geological, biological and chemical interactions? So I personally think we know quite a lot about the deep sea. Not everything, but we know a lot. But the Moon and Mars are just a totally unfair comparison because it's just not the same thing. I know it comes under exploration and I know it comes under sort of these amazing feats of human curiosity and so on, but it's just not the same thing. So let's look at the moon, for example. The moon is about 3,500 kilometres in diameter, right? Australia is wider than the moon's diameter. So the moon's not that big, for starters. The North Atlantic has got a greater footprint than the entire lunar surface. I guess people don't normally think about that. You always think of the moon as being huge, but the North Atlantic is bigger than the moon. 
So the surface area of the moon is only about 7.5% of that of Earth, and 70% of the moon is not covered with opaque seawater. <laughs> right, so give us a give yourself a fighting chance. The moon isn't sitting under an average of 4,000 metres of water, so imaging the surface of a planet from orbiting satellites is considerably more difficult when there's a gaseous atmosphere of which I think Earth is, what, about 16 kilometres thick, and it's hiding underneath this blue veneer of seawater. Sometimes the statement's used, and I think they're trying to infer that we've mapped more of the moon than the oceans. But there's a whole argument about, well, what constitutes this mapping? It depends on the types of resolution, whether or not it's mapped at very high resolution or very low resolution and so what. But this, the surface of the Earth, which is land, is bigger than the Moon. And you can go on Google Earth and that's the easy bit. So it's still not really like for like. But when you look at the current maps of the seafloor now, we divide it up into grid cells. And 82% of those grid cells don't have a single depth measurement. So that's what people use to say, oh, no, we know nothing about the oceans. That's percentage of knowledge. Just divide that by number of grid cells. Basically, yeah. 82% of the ocean we don't have depth measurements for, real ones. It's all kind of derived from satellite stuff. So that means we have mapped about 18%. So the total area of the ocean would be about 360 million square kilometres. 18% of that is still almost twice the total area of the Moon. So you could argue that we've mapped to a pretty good resolution twice the lunar surface underwater at 4,000 metres average. Right, so that's pretty good. Right, why are we, we hitting ourselves over this? So it depends what you call knowing about it. Mapping doesn't necessarily mean you know about it. It just means you could create a picture of the landscape. It doesn't necessarily mean you understand its importance or what it does or how it changes or any kind of seasonality and so on. So why would you then in deep sea biology say there's less known about deep sea biology than a moon that has no biology at all? We could argue that we know more about my desk than we know about the abyssal plains because there's less attributes to know about. Percentage-wise, it's probably really high. So anyway... This statement is stupid. It's from 60-some years ago, and it was in a different time. It was long before the Apollo missions. It was long before any major deep-sea exploration anyway. So I texted Tom back with my good news, and he wrote back going, it's just every bit as terrible as I hoped. And it was, came from a time where they probably thought the night sun still caused madness. So uh, anyway, you couldn't make this up, I said. But the earliest upgrade from we know more about the moon to we know more about Mars believe it or not, came from 2010. So the earliest one I can find is the statement, we know more about the surface of Mars than we know about Kevin Spacey's private life. Which, if you remember, Blue Planet Episode 2 was aired in Guy Fox Day 2017, was also happens to coincide with uh, revelations about Kevin Spacey's extracurricular activities. So that was, that was quite nice. So anyway, for somehow, Kevin Spacey's private life has become intertwined with how much we don't know about our own discipline. I couldn't mention any of this for the, the review, so I didn't do it. So... The next one that really bugs me as well is more people have been to the moon than have been to the deepest point on Earth. Again, so what? But let's have a look at it. Is that really a fair comparison? Because the deepest point in the world's ocean is Challenger Deep, right? Mariana Trench. 10,925 metres, plus or minus 15. So the exact boundary of Challenger Deep we don't really know because we just make up contours. If you take 10,000 metres as being the boundary to it, Challenger Deep is about 11 kilometres by 1.6 kilometres wide, oval depression. So the area of Challenger Deep is, let's say, for argument's sake, 14 square kilometres. The Moon has a surface area of 38 million square kilometres, which is equivalent to about 7.5% of the Earth. So between 1969 and 1972, six of the Apollo missions put 12 people on the Moon. So are we really doing a fair comparison here? Because we're talking about delivering 12 people to an area the size of 38 million square kilometres versus the deepest point in the world, which until recently was about three, to a target of 14 square kilometres. It just doesn't feel right, because we do this, and then we just declare deep-sea explorers the losers, when it's really not the same thing. So, for argument's sake, we could say more people have visited Challenger Deep than have been to the Sea of Tranquility. But even then, the Sea of Tranquility is 500,000 square kilometres wide. So, it's perhaps not a useful analogy, it's because the technology, the cost, and the effort in these types of exploration are, are as polarised as the types of environment they explore. So I don't think we should do deep-sea exploration injustice through unfair analogies like this. But I think we can turn it on its head, and actually, if you really had to go down this route, we could show that deep-sea exploration is not as chronic as people like to think it is. So most deep submergence vehicles, or submersibles, are operational in the top 1,000 metres. There are a few that go to 4,000 metres, or have gone to 4,000 metres. And there are some that are rated to 6,000 metres, and there are a very few, historically and currently, that can go all the way. But to get to 6,000 metres, you've got a 98% coverage of the seafloor. So it's that 2%, right? If, you, if you're going to go for the hero dives and the hero stories of who got to the top, who got the deepest, you know, if you want to go into that comparing with the moon stuff, let's, rather than say who got to Challenger Deep, who got to that 14 square kilometres of the bottom, how many people have got to that last 2% who have broken that six or 7,000 metre mark in something that could go all the way? It becomes much more interesting. 